There are many times when middle schoolers can feel nervous, but other middle schoolers can feel nervous about things that they shouldn't be worrying about. Middle schoolers are trying to learn, but they can't with all of these horrible made up scenarios in their head. They can think from a math test to death in a matter of seconds, but there's hope. Adults have to take these measures in their own hands if they wish for their child or student to ever get better. Adults, you have to take on this role or your child will worsen. Take it from a kid who knows these feelings and sees the inside and out. If you think your child or student has anxiety, you should first know what type of anxiety disorder it is, how this can hurt the student's grades, which no one really likes, and if you don't know how to identify someone with anxiety, I'll explain some actions and or behaviors that show that us children can have anxiety. There are a lot of types of anxiety disorders that teachers and parental figures need to know, but the biggest one is generalized anxiety. This is the most common, so this is why I'll be talking about this one specifically. Generalized anxiety is when someone will worry too much about certain topics, such as family, school, and or the future. Imagine that you're sitting at a school just minding your own business when a random thought hits you, just about a simple assignment. Then you think about school. Then you think about life. Then you think about the future. And then this list can just keep going on and on until the child or student just starts to feel horrible. This is also why anxieties like these can affect your child or student's grades. According to Anxiety Disorder Fact Sheet for Schools, when kids are anxious in class, this means they are thinking of something else. They aren't paying attention. This can then spiral into them having a lot of trouble completing classwork slash assignments in class due to them not focusing in class. When they think they are in the zone, they are worried, they are scared, they don't care about what's going on outside because they are too deep into the thinking. But of course, not all kids are like this though, because certain types of anxiety can also affect the students. For example, from the article, How Does Anxiety Affect Kids in School? Selective mutism can make it hard for kids to talk if they don't feel comfortable talking in the class. And social anxiety can make it hard for the student to participate in class and socialize with other students. A quote that really helps sum all this up is in the article, How Does Anxiety Affect Kids in School? In this article, it stated, Anxiety tends to lock up the brain, making school hard for anxious kids. This basically means that anxiety will cause the brain just to stop whatever it's doing to think, to think long, to think hard about these things that aren't important today. But people with anxiety think it's valid today. Students with anxiety think about their life or future as if tomorrow they're going to just grow up and have a job. With all this information, you might be thinking, well, this is a lot of good information about the inside of anxiety, but what about the outside? How can I see this? Well, fellow questioner, I have news for you. According to the article, How Does Anxiety Affect Kids in School? and Top 10 Signs of Students' Anxiety in the Classroom, people with anxiety can show behaviors and actions that could indicate they have anxiety. For parents, your child might have bad sleeping habits. For example, hard times falling asleep, sleeping in, nightmares, and waking up but still feeling so tired. You might also notice that for your child or student, stop talking with close friends. Now for teachers. Teachers, you might notice that maybe your student hasn't been participating in class activities as much as before. Or maybe you haven't been talking much at all from just raising a hand to in the halls completely. Also, the child or student can be very squirmish and just not capable to sit still. To sum everything up, anxiety is no laughing matter and needs to have awareness and be taken seriously. These facts are all ways that can help you see if your child or student has anxiety. But either way, always try checking in with your children or students every two weeks because you never know when or if anxiety will hit them. 
When you talk with your child or student, don't ask them how they are feeling or if they're depressed. Ask them what they did today. Ask if they feel comfortable. Ask how happy they are on a scale from one to ten. Just ask them any specific questions that can make them feel happy to answer. With these talks, your goal is to make the child or student feel safe where they are, calm and not nervous talking with you. Let them talk. Let them vent. Let them talk with you because that's a chore as an adult you have to do. Even if you don't think your child or student doesn't have anxiety or anything wrong with them, still always check on their mental health. Cause unlike physical, mental health is an eternal war.